Hello, this is Danny Peterson coming to you from the Calgary Department of Emergency Medicine Point of Care Ultrasound Program. This tutorial has been created to outline the basics of examining the gallbladder with ultrasound at the bedside. This tutorial is meant to introduce basic gallbladder image acquisition and image interpretation with regards to cholelithiasis and cholecystitis that can be done quickly and easily. The most important positive findings that are sought when performing point-of-care gallbladder and biliary ultrasound are cholelithiasis, sonographic Murphy sign, gallbladder wall thickening, pericholecystic fluid, and lastly common bile duct dilation. Now common bile duct dilation is technically the most difficult and time-consuming part of the exam to complete. The utility of obtaining uh, common bile duct measurements when performing point-of-care biliary ultrasound has been called into question recently. One retrospective review of 125 pathology-confirmed cases of cholecystitis that had a radiology-performed ultrasound revealed that all instances of common bile duct dilation were accompanied by one or more additional findings. Positive sonographic Murphy sign, gallbladder wall thickening, pericarlocystic fluid, or laboratory abnormalities. This review would suggest that common bile duct visualization confers no additional sensitivity to the point of care diagnosis of acute cholecystitis. Therefore, common bile duct measurements will not be included in this tutorial. Patients are generally in the supine position for most point of care ultrasound scanning, including the gallbladder exam. However, certain maneuvers when positioning conscious and cooperative patients can help optimize gallbladder visualization. Instructing the patient to take and hold a deep breath or asking the patient to puff out their abdomen will often descend the gallbladder inferiorly into the field of view. Also, turning the patient into a left lateral decubitus position will shift gas-filled structures such as the duodenum and enhance visualization. Start by placing the transducer along the inferior border of the costal margin on the patient's right side with a transducer marker pointing towards the patient's head. Angle the transducer slightly cephalad. Next, slide the transducer laterally and inferiorly along the costal margin until the gallbladder comes into view. The gallbladder will appear as a hypoechoic, oblong, or circular structure. Rotate and tilt the transducer with small movements until the gallbladder is seen in its true longitudinal orientation. In a longitudinal plane, the relationship between the thick-walled portal vein and the gallbladder is often viewed as an exclamation point with the hyperechoic main lobar fissure connecting the two structures. The gallbladder should also be viewed in a transverse orientation by rotating the transducer 90 degrees from a longitudinal orientation with the transducer marker pointing to the patient's right. Viewed in a transverse orientation, the gallbladder has a circular shape. It is important to sweep through the entire gallbladder in both transverse and longitudinal planes to ensure complete visualization. The gallbladder may also be visualized in between the ribs of the right antero-inferior chest wall when difficult to visualize the gallbladder as previously described. The narrower footprint phased array transducer is preferred for intercostal imaging to minimize rib shadows. Lastly, placing the transducer on the lateral chest wall, similar to acquiring a traditional fast exam view for trauma, may be attempted. From the lateral chest wall, move the transducer medially between the ribs to visualize the gallbladder in different planes. One limitation of intercostal imaging of the gallbladder is the inability to assess for a sonographic Murphy sign. Gallbladder stones are strongly echogenic, usually mobile structures within the gallbladder that cast a prominent shadow. Stones may be single or multiple and vary considerably in size. Stones in the neck of the gallbladder are less likely to be mobile and more likely to cause symptoms. This gallbladder in the longitudinal plane has at least one gallstone with clear shadowing located within the fundus. This is another example of several small yet discrete gallstones located in the dependent areas of the gallbladder with shadowing. This example shows many tiny gallstones that are indistinguishable from one another that result in a large, prominent shadow being cast into the far field. This example shows a large stone with shadowing in the neck of the gallbladder. 
Note that with larger stones, only the echogenic near field portion of the gallstone is seen because the echoes are unable to penetrate the stone, similar to the appearance of the vertebral body when abdominal scanning. Although several potential findings can be mistaken for gallstones, the two most common false positives will be discussed here. Gallbladder sludge, as seen in this clip, is dependent material of variable echogenicity. Occasionally, sludge will form into discrete circular structures called tumefactive sludge that can resemble gallstones. An important finding of tumefactive sludge compared to gallstones is the absence of a shadow. It is possible, however, for biliary sludge to cause obstruction and acute cholecystitis. Gallbladder polyps are benign, small, nodular structures adherent to the gallbladder wall that can be distinguished from gallstones because they are neither mobile nor cast a shadow. Cholecystitis is an inflammation of the gallbladder wall most frequently caused by cystic duct obstruction by a gallstone. The key findings are presence of gallstones, sonographic Murphy sign, gallbladder wall thickening, and pericholecystic fluid. These findings may present alone or in various combinations, and when considered along with abnormal laboratory findings, a diagnosis of cholecystitis can be made. A sonographic Murphy sign is elicited by placing pressure with the ultrasound transducer directly over the anteriormost portion of the gallbladder. Maximal tenderness directly over the gallbladder compared to other regions of the right upper quadrant is highly predictive of cholecystitis. The gallbladder wall is considered normal if it is less than 3 mm thick. Wall thickness greater than 3 mm is most commonly due to cholecystitis. However, false positives for a thickened gallbladder wall include ascites, congestive heart failure, pancreatitis, hypoalbuminemia, and a non-fasted state, where the gallbladder will contract and wall thickness is not as reliable. It is important to measure wall thickness at the most anterior portion of the gallbladder when possible because acoustic enhancement at the posterior wall may result in falsely elevated values. This example in the transverse orientation shows a thick gallbladder wall measured at 8.1 millimeters. This gallbladder in the longitudinal view has a large gallstone lodged in the neck of the gallbladder and a wall thickness that measures 6.6 .6 millimeters. Pericholecystic fluid is a feature of cholecystitis in which localized fluid collections are observed adjacent to the gallbladder. Careful examination of such fluid collections is warranted to ensure that the fluid is not contiguous with the peritoneum, as seen with ascites. Now let's look at some examples of cholecystitis. This example has a positive sonographic Murphy sign, cholelithiasis, and a thick gallbladder wall. This example shows a large stone impacted in the neck of the gallbladder and a thick gallbladder wall. This is a case of chronic cholecystitis. There are at least two large gallstones, sludge, wall thickening, and possibly perforation of the anterior wall of the gallbladder. In summary, assessment of the gallbladder with point of care ultrasound is relatively straightforward. Gallbladder stones are usually easily identified with point of care ultrasound, which in the right setting allows clinicians to make the diagnosis of biliary colic and forego formal ultrasound exams at increased cost and time in the emergency department. Identifying acute cholecystitis using point of care ultrasound requires the identification of any combination of cholelithiasis, gallbladder wall thickening, sonographic Murphy sign, and pericholecystic fluid. And that concludes this short introduction to point-of-care gallbladder ultrasound. Good luck and happy scanning!